So we got a Flash trailer, and I really only noticed one thing. Ezra Miller can't act to save his life. This is the world where my mom lives. I'm not gonna lose her again. Every line is delivered in the same monotonous tone. I created a world with no metahumans. Now there's no one to defend us. It's not that he delivers his lines like a block of wood. He's more like a fence post that's been in the ground too long. So it's rotting and damaged at its very core. In fact, the only thing worse than his delivery is when he tries to actually put some emotion into his voice. This can't be happening. I completely broke the universe. Different people, different worlds. My face. You saw my face. This is why when all the controversy came out about Ezra Miller, I thought it was true. I've seen the videos. He's not that believable. This is Ezra Miller, the Mad Goose Wizard. It's me. Okay, talk to you soon, okay? Bye! In fact, the main thing I was surprised about is when he put his hands around somebody's neck, he could actually lift them up. I never expected him to have the strength of an average man. Whoa, bro, 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 bro. Although it is nice in the Flash movie that they did do a member berry of that activity in the movie itself. Around himself, no less. Based economy. I guess karma comes at you fast. In fact, the most believable part about Ezra Miller as the Flash is when he started to record women without their knowledge. Barry, what are you doing? The Mad Goose Wizard. And it really is amazing that this movie is even going ahead. I mean, we cancelled Batgirl because that was an abomination. Whereas Ezra Miller has even tried to use complex health issues as a way to get out of trouble for his previous actions. Actions like his burglary charges or engaging in extremely dodgy situations with various people, and yet somehow just magically managed to avoid time behind bars for any of this. In fact, I went on to Bounding Into Comics to quickly find some references to this stuff and found so many stories of the horrific things that he's been doing, it was astronomical. He's been engaged in so many illicit activities and horrible stories that if I went into detail about them, it'd take up the entire video. And so with all that in mind, I have to question why DC has gone to so much effort on the movie posters to make the Flash look dark and evil. When you could have just used his police monk shots. But I'm sure with all of these problems surrounding your main actor for a movie, you will have put the extra work in to make a banger of a movie that no one can complain about with an completely creative and original plot. You can go anywhere, another universe. So why do you want to stay and fight to save this one? Oh, we're just doing that again, are we? No, we have to stop him because he's putting the world at danger. Is it just the world? No, it's time. If I can't undo what I did, there might not be a future. And the universe and every single atom that's ever existed throughout all of the multiverse. Can we go bigger than that after? I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, we'll just say there's a second multiverse where that's in danger as well. The Mad Goose Wizard. Okay, well, there's got to be something good about the movie. If they're not cancelling it and their main character is horrific, what other positives could they have? Well, I mean, they've got Supergirl. I'm not playing around saving people in this thing. No, not that one. Actually, one of my first videos on this channel is why would anyone watch Supergirl? It's a bit rough around the edges, but I think it still holds up today. And there were definitely lessons to be learned from the Supergirl series, especially now it's getting axed. You see, there was a certain time, a costume change for Supergirl, where they decided to take away her skirt. I guess that's your cue, Supergirl. Something they were all unreasonably excited about to an absurd degree. My goodness gracious, pants, 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 pants. Oh yes, this is amazing. I have thrown off the shackles of the conventionally attractive patriarchy. And the skirt was so iconic and very synonymous with the comic book version, but moved to Vancouver and it was cold. <laughs> and it feels right. It feels like, like a, the right evolution and mm. the right time to do it. Where have all my viewers gone? What were the demographic of our audience again? Why are we getting cancelled? But surely this movie will have looked at the mistake of the Supergirl series and changed it, fixed it, because it definitely needs something to draw people into this show. Right, she's in pyjamas. It's, it's not exactly what I meant. Oh, and that's the CGI, is it? I can understand that you want to save money, but maybe you should have just left the PlayStation 2 at home for this one. But there is a shining light, a beacon of hope that maybe this movie won't be complete trash after all. And that is Batman. Not only does he get the best sets, and the best vehicles. Multiple of the best vehicles, actually. He also looks to have the best costumes. Yeah. I'm Batman. And lines. Now, I have to admit, I'm biased when it comes to this. I don't come from a comic book background, so I am a complete superhero normie. Everything I know comes from movies, TV series, animations, and games. And that's why Batman is my favorite superhero. <laughs> Largely because of the Arkham games, especially the second one, and the Dark Knight trilogy. Especially the second one, and the less said about the third, the better. But the thing is, if I'm a complete normie, I'm also assuming I'm not on my own. In fact, from what I've seen about other people talking about the trailer, they also thought that Batman was the best thing about the trailer. So I have to ask, why isn't this a Batman movie? Why couldn't you have just made an entire Batman movie and cut Ezra Miller out of it? 
everything we've seen him do, all the actions that he's done in the real world, that would normally be enough. Why is it not for him? Why have people had their entire careers destroyed because of tweets? Why have we had people where one person has complained on Twitter and suddenly their entire career is over? And yet Ezra Miller, the mad goose wizard, can attack people, get done for federal crimes of burglary, not only just not go behind bars, but still come out in a movie. You want to talk about second chances, road to redemptions, okay, whatever the rule is, I'm not particularly bothered. But could we please just have some consistency over here? You got rid of Batgirl because it was trash, and yet want to keep Ezra Miller. This is a guy who's playing a superhero whose sole special ability involves him running around very quickly when the actor can't run. Why he couldn't have just imitated somebody else running, I don't know. Pick Tom Cruise, Pierce Brosnan, or David Tennant, any of them will do. But instead, Ezra Miller, the Flash, he had to be original, he had to be creative. He had to be inspired by a mongoose. And oh boy, you think I'm joking. Young Ezra Miller tried running like the Flash, but stumbled. He worked with dancers and choreographers, as well as looked at nature. I was inspired by crows, cheetahs, mongooses, and other fast-moving and intelligent creatures. I needed to become a superhero, so I just decided to imitate a mongoose. Why didn't anybody else think of this? Now, Ezra Miller was apparently a big comic book fan when he was a kid, although he never read much of The Flash. I don't know, the red flags keep on coming, but if you think that's all of them, you've seen nothing yet. I didn't read The Flash, but I did used to run around outside. With that vast amount of experience, I can understand why you got the job. I would often get a little bit ahead of myself and my feet, and as a result, do what became the definitive move of mine, the faceplant. I would full nosedive into concrete and potholes. I don't know, I think we may just be stumbling into one of the reasons why he behaves as he does as an adult and other children. Does he mean last week or when he was a kid still? I went to the hospital for nosedive related injuries a few times. So I feel the role of the Flash swelled within me even then. Because if the Flash is known for one thing, it's faceplanting into the floor. Run, Barry, run! Then we're gonna have to take you to the hospital. Then we find out that his favorite part of being the Flash was the costume fitting and design process. Honestly, I'm not surprised. What would you have been if you weren't the Flash Ezra? In prison? No, I would have been on the catwalk. We had many long days where we were holding heavy objects above our head for 12 or 14 hours straight, which is the longest in Hollywood anyone's ever been straight. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this movie will be trash. I don't know, maybe it's going to be amazing. I'm just saying, I think there were a lot of decisions made along the way with various different casting or ideas of how characters should be. And if it's going to be saved, I think it will just be because the action is good and it's got Batman in it. And I do agree that the success of a movie largely depends on the box office, not whether it's actually any good or not. Those are two different metrics. But at this point, I don't care if the movie makes $20 billion. I still think it's a mistake to have Ezra Miller as the Flash in his own movie and reward him for everything he's done. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.